I don't know what it is, but so far 2022 started off a little strange, a little weird, and I don't know what's going on. It's definitely a weird January here in Ontario, Canada. Give me a little bit. I'll get started up on some chores, and then I'll go over what it is I'm talking about. How you doing guys? Chad here. Welcome back to the channel. And thanks for tuning in to this episode of Chronicles of a Farm Stay Startup here at the Hidden Spring Farm. <laughs> Little bit nippy today, but not too bad. That looks like it's about minus four Celsius and 25 Fahrenheit. That's a little bit brisk. It's kind of nippy, but it's okay. We've had worse. Couple things I wanted to talk to you guys about. What's going on inside this chicken house? So far so good through this cold temperatures. The chicken house is just slightly warmer than outside, not by much. I'm continuing to do the deep bedding method. There's a more serious problem though. I mean, I don't really know if it's a problem problem, but it could lead to a problem. And that is Elvis and his three hens they're about a year and a half old. Those three hens were giving me white eggs, I don't know, every other day. So in a week we had maybe like 10 eggs from those three hens. Then we hatched out a whole bunch of the black leghorn chicks. So now there's seven hens. The four additional hens, maybe they're just not at the age yet that they're gonna be laying. But if you guys recall, since I moved Elvis and those black leghorn chickens into this new chicken house, they have not laid me any eggs. And I know that you guys hear me talking about this like so many episodes, but really it's starting to be a legitimate problem because it's going on like four months now. 
that those chickens have not gave even one white egg. Nothing, nada, zip. So I'm feeding them and feeding them and feeding them, you know, and then they're not doing nothing for me. What's going on? That's a long time without an egg. So, I mean, when it gets into spring season, you know, like March, April, May, where we're gonna start thinking about what we're doing for meat birds this year and what chicks we're gonna be hatching out. I kind of feel like I, I have to reconsider this black leghorn flock. And I mean, I wanted leghorns, you know? And you know why I wanted leghorns? Because of foghorn leghorn. I grew up on those Looney Tunes cartoons. Black leghorns are more rare than white leghorns, but they're supposed to be prolific layers. And honestly, they haven't been, and it's been quite a disappointment. So, <laughs> four months with no eggs from these guys, that's a lot of food. They're supposed to be giving me eggs, right guys? So basically, we give them layer feed all the time. They have constant access to layer feed. They have constant access to water. They have those nesting boxes that we gave them. They're all full of straw. I tried putting like golf balls, ping pong balls to try to train them to lay in there. And I mean, they just haven't laid. We give them vegetable scraps. Sometimes we give them, you know, like a head of lettuce and a head of cabbage. And we give them a, a little variety of vegetables. We give them five grain scratch. They've been in this chicken house for four months now and they have access to like a large run area, so they're getting good exercise. They're, they can't be bored or anything. So I don't know what's going on. I'm at my wits end with these black leghorns. And please, if you have any idea, if you're watching this, how to get your hens to start laying again, let me know. I mean, it's possible that these hens are just done. I hope not though. Michael Jackson is so docile, not like, uh, not like Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley, the black leghorn, you can hardly even grab him. He's always running away from you. But this guy, he just kind of walks around and I can just pick him up. Okay, let's just run over quick to the ducky bunky and get those duck eggs, if there are any duck eggs. <laughs> we'll see how many cats and dogs follow me.
Mary and Fozzie and Molly are behaving quite well, but Chunky and Dexter went out into the duck run and they're freaking out the ducks. The ducks don't know what to do because there's a couple of kittens there. You know, ducks, they're so scared of everything. Got four beautiful duck eggs today, guys. Beautiful duck eggs. And they're not frozen. They buried them really good under the straw. So that's good. They're not cracked. Now here's the problem. I got all these cats in here with me and now I want to go out and give the ducks their, their water and all the cats are in there. <laughs> oh, what did I get myself into? Stormy! Fuzzy! Let's go! Let's go! Stormy! Let's go! Fuzzy! Let's go, buddy! Let's go! Come on! Let's go! Come on, let's go. Dexter, let's go. Dexter, let's go. Dexter. Dexter. I must say it's been really, really nice having these water hydrants all over the farm because it saves my back and it saves my shoulders. It's a lot less work throughout the winter, especially when it's cold outside. You don't really want to be out for long periods, but I'm loving it so far. So like I was saying earlier, it's really been a weird start to the new year here. We hardly have any snow. It's snowed and melted, snowed and melted. I don't know, a dozen times. And if you guys have been paying attention to the channel, one video, there's lots of snow. The next video, there's none. The next video, there's lots of snow and it's really weird. But right now, we had a lot of snow the other day. A lot of it is melted. And now this here is all ice. It's sheer ice everywhere. So Molly is slipping all over the place. Stormy, what are you doing? Now if you remember, sometime around this time last year, this was packed with snow and we had a bunch of trespassing snowmobilers and I made a whole video about it and I was so unhappy and it was just a ridiculous experience. But this year, there's hardly any snow. Now, you know, I'm not complaining. It's not easy running a farm with all this snow around. But I feel like I would much rather have a little layer of proper snow rather than having all this ice. So me being a good old Canadian boy, I played hockey right up until I was 17 years old, until I tore my medial collateral ligament in my knee. Then my hockey career was done. But I'd like to think I have a decent amount of balance on the ice. Wouldn't that be something? If I can ever get my fish pond built, then it would be covered in ice in the winter and you could do ice skating and hockey and stuff like that, ice fishing, that would be something. But I don't know guys, I don't know. This year's turning out to be really weird. Here in Ontario, Canada, they just put another semi-lockdown because of this uh, COVID Omicron 
stuff and it's, it's very deflating. So as you guys know, the channel is Chronicles of a Farm Stay Startup. Now, I don't know what time or at what point will we not be a startup anymore, but I still feel like we're in the building of infrastructure stage. So that to me is still a startup. There's money to be made in short-term rentals. You gotta deal with all the extra cleaning and all the extra laundry and all the bookings and all that kind of nonsense that comes along with it. But there's money to be made. But now, because of this looming restrictions from the government and this looming lockdown, I'm not quite sure if our bookings will get canceled. Now we just had a guest in here over the Christmas holidays. We had another guest in here for seven days from Christmas to the New Year's. And we have another guest from early January all the way until the end of February. That's one guest. They booked like nine, eight weeks, nine weeks, just one guest. Then we have another couple of guests in early March. And then I have another summer booking from July 1st to September 1st. That's another summer booking. So we're doing quite well, but that's the last thing we need is for the government to shut down short-term rentals and then we're not allowed to rent to anybody. Just like last year where we lost six or $7,000 worth of bookings. That's just nuts. <laughs> All the cats are out here again. Look, Chunky's down here. I see Stormy over there. Maggie's up there somewhere. <laughs> They're always keeping me company anywhere I go on the farm, and it's a really good feeling, guys. I mean, I said to myself from day one of starting this channel that I want it to be a farm channel, but I want it to show a wide variety of things on a farm. Wide variety, not just animals, also building things, also construction, also farm equipment, different equipment. You know, I'm, I'm starting to get involved in firewood now. And I mean, we got an orchard, I wanna do a pond. We got ducks, geese, chickens, a whole slew of chickens, barn cats. I said to myself from day one, I want my channel to be something that I myself would watch on TV. So far, I'd like to think that we're getting there, but this weird start to 2022 may affect what our plans were gonna be for 2022. If you remember last year, guys, I did a video talking about all my plans for 2021 and I didn't get all of them done. And a lot of it is to do with me not managing my time properly. Obviously the chicken house build took way too long. I didn't even have time to do anything else, but also some money building a pond here on the farm. It's going to cost a good amount of money. I'm not even sure if I'll be able to do it this coming year also. So we'll have to see, you know, I gotta, I gotta pace myself. A pond is not something that I can do myself. As you guys know about me already, I like to do building myself. So basically all I'm doing is buying materials. So it becomes more affordable to me because I'm doing it myself. If I hired somebody to build me that chicken house, that's gonna be like 30 grand, you know? Whereas all it cost me was materials. But we'll have to see what we're gonna be able to get done financially this year if the government goes into a full lockdown and we're not able to rent out the farmhouse. And that's really good. It's a good sign. We have bookings crossing my fingers that the government doesn't do anything stupid. That is quite frustrating here in Ontario because it's been two years that we're into this pandemic and uh, you know, the government is closing indoor dining and they're restricting retail to 50% and they're closing theaters, they're closing museums. It doesn't make any sense if everybody's vaccinated. Ontario has one of the highest percentage of the population vaccinated in the world. And now they're telling everybody three shots. Pretty soon it'll be four shots. So what's going on here? But the government had two years to increase the ICU capacity, but they didn't. They sat on it. All they do is hand out free money to all the citizens that us taxpayers contribute to. And now it's two years later and they want to shut everything down again because the hospital ICU cases are going up again and the, you know, the medical system can't handle it. Well, they should have done something about that back then. Anyways, never mind. I don't want to get into a rant about COVID. I cut down a dead tree in the forest the other day. I got to split all this wood. I'm still working on you know, filling up our woodshed area because I want to start like a firewood business, you know, like bundling and whatnot. So I'll have more videos on that to come, but I'm looking forward to adding another side hustle for myself here on the farm. 
barn cats caught a mole or something, but now it's frozen, so they're just playing with it. Don't forget to pound the like if you like the video, guys. Really do appreciate you watching. You guys take care, okay? We'll see you on the next episode.